So chapter five takes a closer look at um, clouds. And then actually we're gonna talk about precipitation from clouds, all sorts of things. Um, there are 10 different cloud types we're gonna focus on. One of them is uh, cumulonimbus clouds and you're gonna learn the names of those 10 types. Anytime you see the word N-I-M-B, NIM, um, think precipitation. Um, the other type of cloud that precipitates is called a nimbostratus cloud. And like we talked about uh, earlier, uh, precipitation by definition is water returning from the atmosphere to the geosphere. So anytime you see a cloud, um, I know we talked earlier, Actually, they're going to have flat bottoms, and the reason they're going to have relatively flat bottoms is this elevation is what we call the LCL, or the lifting condensation level. And the reason they appear whitish is this, these liquid droplets, uh, water, liquid water, in the cloud actually is scattering when the uh, light from the sun and it's scattering all components of light the whole Roy G bib all colors of light in all directions and it's multiply scattering it so it gives it that kind of whitish look okay so that's clouds now notice I've drawn an L up here for uh, liquid but actually if we have uh, solid water water crystals it does the same thing it scatters too <coughs> So I'm going to kind of uh, um, just talk about just the very, very first part of the formation of a cloud. And it's going to begin with something we talked about in um, chapter four. Uh, remember we said that as a chunk of air ascends, it's going up. Hopefully you know what this means. It expands. As it expands, it cools. It, if it's <clears throat> at first, if no, if no, uh, condensation or liquefaction is happening in that parcel of air, it cools at what we call the dry adiabatic rate. Does that make sense? So as a parcel ascends, it will adiabatically cool according to the dry adiabatic rate of dun, 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 10 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 meters it rises. All right, so as it cools, one of the things we also talked about in, um, in Chapter 4, we said that the relative humidity is basically a measure of the amount of water vapor present relative to the uh, amount of water vapor that the air can hold at that temperature. Vapor air can hold. And I kind of hesitate to use the word hold because, but it just comes out so naturally. We talk about the air holding uh, water vapor um, until at some point it liquefies. Um, that when we reach 100% relative humidity, basically your air is saturated and you're going to get some sort of condensation. Now within a cloud, the thing that helps the condensation get started is a little tiny piece of something, oftentimes just dust, but we'll talk about different types of nuclei, a little piece of something called a cloud condensation nuclei that just kind of gets those water molecules together, gets them started condensing in the first place. Okay. If you've ever heard, um, don't, um, don't eat snow because snow is dirty, I mean, I kind of think of this in that, in general, uh, some sort of nuclei or cloud condensation nuclei probably started that snow crystal or that, um, that rain droplet up in the upper atmosphere to get started. But there's got to be more to the story, and we'll talk about the, that what there is more to the story later in Chapter 5. There has to be more than just condensation around these cloud condensation nuclei. For one, um, all those little bits, those little dust that kind of get the condensation started in the first place, well, they are quickly consumed. And then once they're consumed, um, no more cloud condensation nuclei, what's it going to do? Stop condensing? And that's not the case. The other thing is once um, the condensation process starts, can you picture this, that once we start going ahead and taking some of those gas or those vapor water molecules and condensing them to form a liquid, 
then what happens is we have now created a situation where the relative humidity is less than 100%. Okay, and then if it's less than 100%, what sort of, why do we have any sort of condensation? So there has to be more than just this initial nuclei getting the liquefaction started. But speaking of cloud condensation nuclei, um, it comes in many forms. I mentioned dust. Dust particles can kind of get the, the process started up within a cloud. Um, salt, so like over the oceans, um, actually salt is a good uh, kind of nuclei to get those ocean clouds begin condensing. Uh, pollen and other stuff in the atmosphere can behave as cloud condensation nuclei. At the end of chapter five, we're going to talk about how um, folks are trying to kind of seed their own clouds. So there'll be man-made nuclei to try to get this process started. <clears throat> so um, as you might imagine, dust, like if you're over the ocean, dust is kind of hard to come by. The other thing is, is as you get go up in elevation farther and farther from the Earth's surface, there's going to be fewer and fewer dust particles. So those are things to think about with regard to the abundance of cloud condensation nuclei, and they have consequences. So we can kind of break nuclei or cloud condensation nuclei into two types, hygroscopic and hygrophobic, excuse me, hydrophobic. Now, in order for me to, met, to remember which is which, I kind of focus on the hydrophobic first. And I think if somebody has a phobia of something, they are afraid of it. So hydro, meaning water, water fearing, hydrophobic. So actually, the second type of nuclei, hydrophobic um, condensation nuclei, they actually are afraid of water. I know it sounds kind of strange, but... If this is my cloud condensation nuclei, my dust or pollen, think of it as kind of repelling these little H2O gas molecules. And so for that reason, actually hydrophobic cloud condensation nuclei, they need the relative humidity to be actually above 100%. We'll talk about how do you get above 100% relative humidity. Now, hygroscopic is the opposite of hydrophobic. So if hydrophobic is water-fearing, then hygroscopic is water-loving. So if this is my cloud condensation nuclei here, and these are my little water vapors, okay, they are like, everybody join the pate. Okay, they basically, they're good at getting H2O gas molecules to join together to, and once they join together and form those intermolecular bonds, um, it liquefies. Con we say condensation occurs. So hygroscopic uh, cloud condensation nuclei actually can work when the air isn't saturated, when it's a below 100% relative humidity.